there, yarn lovers, it's Gary, and I'm coming to you from my happy place, the Yarn Corner here on Vancouver Island in Canada. So welcome, welcome, welcome. Today is Thursday, April the 18th, 2024. How are you all doing? I hope you're well and staying safe. If you're happening across this channel for the very first time, I set this channel up to talk about all of my yarning adventures. That's in knit, crochet. I do dabble in a little bit of yarn dyeing, not too much. And I, I talk about my acquisitions where I purchase my yarn from and also tools of my craft. So if that is of interest to you, please stick around. And for those returning, I want to say welcome back. Thank you so much for all the comments in the last few videos that I dropped. I really enjoy uh, interacting and finding out what you've been working on. And I posed a couple of questions in the last few videos. So I want to say thank you so much for answering and helping me along my journey. So, uh, before I get going on what this video is all about today, I always talk about what Hank, my man form, is wearing and what I'm wearing. So Hank is wearing a knitted shawl that I completed about six months ago called Dotted Rays, and it's by Stephen West. I am wearing something that I created not to pattern, but it's a raglan style sweater. And I was doing a stitch, which is two colored, rib stitch with a pass over the back. So I created uh, this kind of texture between two uh, yarns, the blue one, and then this kind of multicolored beigey and browns running through it. I really enjoyed working with this yarn and creating that kind of texture. I did learn it from Tin Can Knits and I will put the helpful tutorial. It's not really a tutorial. It's more like the construction of the uh, rib stitching in the two colors. And I'll leave that down in the description box below. As with everything, if I mention a YouTuber or a pattern tutorial, I will have all my information down in the description box. So if you're interested in opening that to find where you can discover more information about it, then that's where everything is. So, as the title suggests in this video, I will be talking about some happy mail that I received. Now this blew my mind. Edith over in Europe has sent me a second box of yarn and I am just absolutely floored with the generosity and all of these new to me yarns that I haven't explored before. So I'm showcasing it because there are new things here that I've never seen before. There is a dictionary of stitches as well uh, that I am eagerly going to be studying and investigating with different color work. So I want to say thank you wholeheartedly, Edith. Now I've already reached out to her and we discussed whether I could show it on the video because there are some wonderful things in here that she's made for me as well. And I want to talk about them and she agreed. So thanks for that. Um, it, let me just reach down here. So this is the box that it arrived in and it was filled to the gills. I cannot pack it the way that it came because everything was in it, its rightful place and it sort of took the perfect amount of space in that box. But now since I've opened it and looked through it, I can't get it back in. So I'll start with this really wonderful card that was included in the box and it says, be happy as in the buzzy bee. And I won't read the uh, inscription here on video, but I have read it uh, prior to the video. And thank you so much for the wonderful comments in there as well, Judith. I am absolutely amazed. This is such a special little gift in here. It is a bee project bag, and it looks like it's in the shape of the hive. So there's the doorway all the bees are coming out of. And it's called Happy Gift, or Hobby Gift, sorry, um, with the, the labeling. So that must be the company that made it. And it's a drawstring bag. So when I put my project, I can keep it, the drawstring kind of drawn like this, and then everything stays nice and safe. It's a sturdy canvas bag, and everything smells so wonderful in here of lavender. And so I found where that source of the lavender smell was coming from. And here it is here, this sachet of little lavender uh, seeds, I guess, from the flower. It smells delightful. And these were 
uh, for Easter. I know Easter is long gone, but uh, I had these in the box sort of scattered around and they were made with all the off cuts of the different, uh, the different uh, projects that Edith was working on. So she had all these leftovers and look how beautiful these eggs are. I'm going to make some bunting out of them and I'm, regardless of whether it's Easter or not, I'm going to put them in my background here somewhere and have these decorate for a little while because I really enjoy them. Each of them are different. They have slightly different textures to them. I uh, love the different color arrangements. Now, in here there was a little uh, label of Lana Grossa Cool Wool, and I think those are all the colors that were used in creating these little Easter eggs. And I have maybe a half a dozen of them. Look at these. They're just amazing. Really nicely textured and they have, each of them have the uh, loopy bits. I just love them. They continue. They continue, all of them. I don't know how best it is to show you these, but I think that's all of them. Yep, I probably have about 12. So wonderful. I love them so much. This one in particular has uh, little windows. That's so cool. So I'll keep them in my little beehive project bag until I have a chance to make the bunting. So there it is again. Also in there, I got some implements and I dropped one of them. So I'll just reach down here and grab it. It is the Knit Pro Symphony set of knitting needles and it's the three millimeter variety in the wood. And that is good for socks or if I'm doing some cabling that needs a small section of knitting to be done separately from the main needles. Uh, yeah, so that could be a very helpful little set there for sure. I have the Symphony in the, oh, this is 2.5 millimeters. This is for binding off, I guess, if I'm at the end of a toe on a sock or if I'm closing up a hat. Uh, so I've got five in the set in these double pointed needles. It's also the wood variety. They're beautiful, thank you so much. In here as well, I have a wonderful book here called 55 Fantastic Japanese Stitch, uh, Knitting Stitches. And it's by Komoti Haya Hayashi. And it's also in including 25 projects. So I guess they're like patterns for different things. And I have had a look through it. I can't show you the, uh, the way it's structured because there are, uh, I guess, copyright for the different stitches. But these are some of the garments in there. We have gloves. We have this bolero jacket. There are some cows, fingerless gloves. What else can I show you? Uh, some swatches, this looks like a scarf. And yeah, most of this is chart reading. There is a formula at the back which explains what each symbol means and the technique within the knitting needle in a pictorial example. And then throughout your, uh, your learning, you get to the point where it just shows you the chart. Uh, so, very chart and symbol uh, kind of driven, this book, but I love it. Look at all those beautiful textures and colors that you that I'm going to learn from this book. So thank you. The publisher is Tato, just there. Yeah. I also received a lookbook from Lana Grossa and it's called The Merino Twist. Now this is a little pocket book that will show what is on offer for this, this Merino twist 
variety of yarn and it goes into what styles of things can be made. There is a pattern at the end, but it's in German. So uh, I won't be able to read that, but I will be able to definitely have some uh, knowledge on what the yarn looks like made up, as well as some inspiration on shapes, structures, and also garments that I could possibly make with a, with other yarn as well that I have that's similar to this Merino twist by Lana Grossa. Eight balls of the next yarn that I'm going to show you. And this is so stinking soft. It's like a cloud. So I, I guess I'll show you what it's called. It's Lana Grossa Puno Duo. Duo? I think that's how it, Puno Duo. And it is in the color 005, which is like a autumny uh, camel slash uh, gold color, camel gold. And I absolutely love it. It's uh, out of five, five being my softest on the scale. This is definitely going to be a four. It's a very, very fuzzy and warm, inviting. It has a romantic quality to it, which... I think any garment made of this that's close to your skin will be uh, decadent for sure. This is a five, uh, sorry, 50 gram ball offering up 210 meters and it is 35% cotton and sorry, 63% cotton and 37% alpaca. So cotton alpaca. I don't believe I've ever used cotton alpaca before. Uh, where are you manufactured? It is a yarn that is made in, uh, I don't know whether it is on the label. They're recommending knitting needles of four to 4.5 millimeters. No crochet hook recommendation, but I would say around the same 4.5 to five millimeters. If you go up half a size, that's generally a good uh, indication. There is a QR code here called Knit Me. So I guess there's probably patterns that are joined to the QR code. And it is made in Italy. Washing instructions, do you have any? Hmm, let me see. I would say to hand wash this for sure. Oh, it does say hand wash, lay flat to dry. Yep. So I've got eight of these. Now this color is interesting because I see other colors in amongst that kind of, uh, it's a camel toasty oranges I see in there, as well as a more smoky gray um, that is entwined with that fiber, the halo fiber itself. Let's take a look at what thickness it is. It does look like it's a a fingering, but with that fuzz, I think it's probably considered a two weight. Yeah, I'm gonna say it's a, treat it like a two weight because of that fuzz. If you make a oopsie, you can rip it back and redo your stitch work without any uh, hang ups with that fuzz. And I have two, five, six, seven, eight of these. They all are. <laughs> Amazing. It's like a cloud. I'll just put them over here in a box. Next I have in here, this is phenomenal, another Lana Grossa and it is called, uh, I'm probably gonna mispronounce this, Millentwilt, Millentwilt Merino. And I got two of these. These are looking to me to be hand-dyed yarns and in these variegated colors of an earthy rusty red going into more brown and then a black gray or it could be actually a very dark green yeah i absolutely love these very soft I would say this one would be out of five, maybe a 3.75 or 3.5. Does have that uh, slight rustic woolly sense to it, but I could wear that against my skin with no issues. So let's take a look. It's called 
Panch, P A A N C H, Panch. That might be the colorway in a different name or the base itself. I'm not too sure. Uh, I have to look more into this yarn. It's made in Italy. It is hand dyed in India from Lana Grossa. 100 grams offering up 200, sorry, 420 meters. And it is suggesting here knitting needle size 2.5 to three millimeters so quite a very fine knitting needle um they are suggesting here to oh it's a circle that indicates a tumble dryer but with a dot in it so i don't know whether that means uh you have to lay flat to dry or hand wash that is uh unknown to me but if i show you the symbols that's them they're, they're kind of suggesting for this to be used as socks in that diagram, but I could use this for anything, even shawls or uh, accessories. The fiber content here is 80% merino, virgin wool, and 20% polyamide. Oh, it does say here to it's machine washable. So yeah, I just read it there in the English section. Uh, so yeah, it's a wonderful soft yarn. I think that might be the colorway called Panch. And I got two of those. It smells like the lavender that was in the box. Thank you so much for this, Edith. The next one, again, oh, all my favorites in colors and all new to me i haven't tried any of these before so apart from one that i'm looking now into the box and seeing this is a yarn called wilson look at that oh my this is wonderful and super super squishy excuse me so when I look at this, I do get the feeling of the Barocco Sesame or the Barocco Medina yarn. And I have been dying to use that. I just received for the first time the Barocco uh, Sesame yarn. And I have it in a mystery bag that I uh, un uh, revealed from Aberdeen. And I'm dying to use it. So this reminds me a lot of that collection. It's called Wilson. I haven't heard of that brand before. And where are you from, Wilson? You are a yarn that is manufactured in, it doesn't say Tesselland? That can't be a place, right? It says here Tesselland. I don't think that's correct, but uh, <laughs> I don't think it's a place. It is a 100 gram ball offering up 210 meters. It does look to me to be a three weight yarn or a DK. And the content value is 43 lana, which I think is wool translated, 39 acrylic, 9% cotton, 9% polyamide. So it is a bit of a mixed bag of different things. Perhaps the extra flecky bits are the polyamide i'm not too sure but there's very different many different colors in here the washing instructions are that i can machine wash it looks like with a tub with 20 30 degrees on it and there are two lines underneath so maybe i'm not too sure what that means with the washing instructions but maybe machine washable uh it is suggesting here Ba -ba. No knitting needle sizes. But because it's a DK weight yarn, depending on what you're making, I would say anywhere from a four or a 3.5 millimeter, a knitting needle or crochet hook all the way up to a four and a half millimeter would work nicely with that yarn, depending on what you're making. I love it. I love it. It's very soft in a different way. So I think it's more, I would classify this as a robust yarn. 
There's no itch or pinch, but it does feel like there is a good structure and sturdiness to the to the ply of this. Uh, so I could wear this against my skin with no issues with scratching or needing any undergarment. So that's a wonderful yarn. The color I'm seeing here is 2424. And it could be Gucci. Gucci might be the colorway name. And there's the colorway number. So absolutely love it. I have one, two, three, four, five, six of these. I opened this one so that we could take a look at it, but the rest are the same. And I'll keep them in their plastic to keep them nice and fresh. Uh, and I got six of them. Six. Enough to make myself more of a... Mm, because there's six, maybe another top. I'm thinking, I'm looking at this and thinking top. It would be a crazy uh, patchwork of squares, maybe, or hexes. Because the color is uh, variegated from all these high contrasts, I'm going to say that's a high contrasty type of variegation between the lights and dark colors, that maybe if I separate them into panels or strips, it might lend itself to a very interesting fabric uh, for a top. So yeah, six of those. I love them. Thank you so much. But wait, there's more. Here is the Stanley Vegan Cake out of the wrapper so that we can get a good sense of the color blends, the fade, and then also a touch and feel on this yarn. I have used this yarn before in the past when I purchased from uh, a place called Pleta Yarns. It's an online store and they sell Stanley Cakes. Uh, it's over in Bulgaria and I absolutely enjoyed working with the vegan cake. It shows up great stitch definition and I crocheted myself a lovely shawl uh, following a pattern. And I think this will be a great candidate for another crocheted shawl uh, using textured and lace work. So yeah, I absolutely love the colors. Great pick there. Uh, we've got this royal blue. It looks like an orangey style uh, red, maybe orangey burnt red, and then uh, into a off-white color in the center. So that's the start. The way that Stanley creates their cakes is that they curate the colors so that if they suggest to make a start in the center pool then um, you have the smaller amount of color when you're starting your project in a crocheted triangle or semicircle that your rows are short so you don't need so much of this, that color when you're starting off in a shawl design like that so uh, they curate the color so that at the edge of the cake when you're finishing and your rows are really, really long, you can uh, have enough colors so that the weight of the color distribution is calculated within the cake. So I think that's a brilliant idea um, to have that already set to go when you're working on a project so you don't have to worry about when you feel the color needs to change to switch it out with another color although that's fun in some regards this one has that equation taken out of it so love it love it love it it's a wonderful color and i'm super happy with it it is a i'm gonna say it's a fingering weight yarn but it is quite a dry a dry feeling yarn it's a cotton polyester blend i think so I'll tell you that a little bit about it. Its color is 201401. It's on the label just there. And they are saying here the content is 80% cotton, 20% polyester. It's 250 grams, offering up 1,200 meters. That's a lot of meter meters. And... They're suggesting here to use a 2.5 to 3.5 millimeter set of knitting needles or a 1.5 or 2 millimeter crochet hook. You can machine wash this, it looks like. Do not tumble dry, lay flat to dry. Uh, the care instructions. 
wonderful, wonderful yarn. Thank you so much. Looking down and seeing the next yarn that I'm going to show you, I almost lost my breath when I was looking at it. This is such a beautiful yarn. It follows along the same train of thought as the vegan cotton cake, but it comes from another company. And these are from a company I've only touched and felt and heard of because Edith sent me another box of beautiful wool yarn from this company called Lolo Crea. And it is situated, I think, in Italy. Um, and I got some more in a different variety of yarn base. This is, I believe, cotton or acrylic. Could be both, actually. Oh, no, it's 50% microfiber and 50% lana, which is wool. And it, it feels almost like cotton to me. It's these two cakes here from Lolo Crea, and it's called Tora Sognol. I think Tora Sognol is the colorway, and there's the label logo of Lolo Crea. So each of these cakes here have 300 grams in them, offering up 970 meters, and it's made in Italy. Wow, it's a fingering weight yarn that is made up of three strands? Three? Maybe four? No, it looks to me like there are three strands in here. But look at the colors. I love this color here on the outside. It's uh, a teal. And then there's this fuchsia pink going into more of a light pink, like a ballet slipper pink. And then it goes into this limish gold green. Absolutely beautiful. So I got two of them. And I all I can think of doing is doing a Yagi Yaga with these. Finding a Yagi Yaga pattern, which is a crochet designer. And uh, they have very heavy textured lace work. And I might find something where I can use both of these together. And that's 1,800 meters. That's quite a big shawl. But I'm thinking that textured type of shawl would work lovely with these. Softness factor. It's it's soft. You can I can wear this against my skin. No issues. There's a lovely sheen to it. Maybe that's because of the microfiber. And I think the stitch work will be stunning in this. I love them. Love them so much. Thank you. I'll put that down here. Maybe I'll put that back in the box there. And likewise, this is from a different company. It's called Unicathy's Bubble. Unicathy's Bubble. Look how pretty that label is. And this is called Turam Visa. Vasa? Turam Vasa. I'm not sure if that's the colorway. Turam Vasa. Sounds like a flower to me in German. And it is 1000 meters and 50% BWIPA. I don't know what that is. 50% BWIPA. Uh, oh, maybe this is the colorway. Valef. Valef. I absolutely love it. Sorry, I am butchering all of that translation and I'm unsure. So if anyone knows what the German is of those words, please let me know. <laughs> I'd love to find out. So... No care instructions and no knitting or crochet needle size suggestions. But likewise with the other one, there are a series of four strands in this one. And it looks to be the weight of a sport weight. And 
I absolutely love these peacock green into more of a periwinkle blue and then onto white. The next delightful yarn that came out of the box going in sequence with the Lola Create company that I was telling you about from Italy are these two alpaca style wool. I absolutely love the colors. Now this a burnt uh, brown color is called Soflino and I'm getting here it is 75% is it 75? Oh 70% uh kid mohair looks like 20% wool and looks like a 10% viscose. I'm getting 370 meters in the 50 gram ball made in Italy. It's really soft. I like it. There is definitely no, no pinch or any itch to it. So I'm going to give it a, out of five, five being the most softest, I'm going to give it a 3.75 to a four on my scale. Absolutely love it. Oh, and it smells great. Love the color. Also in a similar style of the yarn is this one here in a teal color. And I'm just going to find the end. So yeah, another, this and the other one, I would say is a sport weight bordering on to a thin DK. And it's got two threads that have been uh, placed together in the cake and that's how you work with them. One thread looks a little bit more woollier and than the other one and the other one looks like it has more fuzz. So it's in a beautiful teal color again from the Lolo Create Crea and it's called <laughs> I'm not going to pronounce this right I know Swazia Swazia and this one here is 70% alpaca, 20% wool, 10% visca or viscos. And it is a 100 gram hank or cake, I should say, offering up 340 me meters. And it's made in Italy. Let's take a look at the next yarn that came in this wonderful box of treasures. It is a novelty yarn. It's quite a shiny one. I'm not sure whether you're meant to hold it with something, but... I some exploration is needed to use this yarn, I think, to its full potential. And it is this one here. Comes on a bobbin. The company name I'm not going to be able to pronounce, but give it a go here. It's Tahil. Tahil yarn. We, if, if it's a silent C, I'm not sure. And the collection is called Summer. Look at that. It's very soft. It's not wiry at all. It has more of a silky feel to it. Very satiny. It feels heavy. Uh, and I'm going to try and read what I can see here in English. The contents is 100% viscose. I'm getting 100 grams in this little bobbin and it is offering up 320 meters. Uh, the knitting needle suggestion is three to four millimeters. No crochet hook suggestion, but I would say, uh, four millimeter and then four and a half. So going up half a size from the knitting needle suggestion. They're saying here, uh, I don't know. It's got an X through a top. So I'm not too sure what that means. Don't make a top out of it but then next to it it says you can make a top out of it so I'm not too sure <laughs> what the symbols mean it says here you can wash this in 30 degree uh, water and I've got a feeling that means you can machine wash it because there's no hand or dot in there the colorway is 66097 it's a Kind of a pewter style, almost between silver and gold color. Very nice. I 
am going to have to swatch and play with this and see what types of things I can make with it and what yarns would work really well with it. So in my playtime, I will be testing that. And that's part of my fun here in the yarn room is to uh, play with yarn. So I call it my playtime with yarn and I got five of them. Then it, also in the box was another yarn from Stanley and it's called their bamboo. Now I have seen this on their website, the Pleta website, but I haven't had a chance to purchase any yet. Now I can uh, try it out and see if this is the yarn that I could use for uh, projects or if I can blend with it and see how I can use the bamboo yarn. So it is on first touch, very cr uh, crispy yarn. Like when you squish, it has a slippy factor. Um, not sure whether that's going to uh, be an issue if you're tying in ends or if that slippiness is uh, something that works to a disadvantage on your hooks or your needle, or if it's an advantage. So definitely going to have to give this one a try. Softness factor, I'm gonna say out of five, it's kind of an interesting feel. It doesn't have any pinch to it. It's quite a silky, satiny finish. And I'm gonna give it a, for what it is, I'm gonna give it a four four out of five. So it's quite up there with the softness value, but in a different way to wool. Um, what can I tell you? The color here is 18513. And this is a yarn that is made in Bulgaria, along with all of the other Stanley yarns. They're from Bulgaria too. And it is saying it's 100% bamboo. I don't think I have ever used 100% bamboo. Uh, getting 100 grams, 250 meters, and it is suggesting a four to five millimeter set of knitting needles, hand wash to lay and lay flat to dry for care instructions. So here I have 500 meters. I am going to try and make a shawl out of this. And I think what I might do is hold something with it because I love the shimmer, that sheen that it has. And that will be a really nice play with the shimmer. I'll just take the ball band off so that you can see. And it's in these wonderful colors, minty greens, spearmint, and more of this uh, sage kind of color. Definitely my greens. I, I do think of succulents when I look at this the types of different greens that you get in succulents it's beautiful the last thing that I have here with all of that work that I have to do with the yarn and the playtime and the investigations and having fun here in the yarn room with this full box of yarn Edith has thought of some beverages that I might need and I agree, I love drinking tea in the evening if I'm working late and I got some tea. So this is yoga tea, the classic blend. And I got the, what is this one? This is tea canny and looks to be in German, but I think that might be lavender tea. I see lavender on there. And this one here is another German brand. Uh, it's called, I think this might be blueberry tea. So some herbal teas. Oh, and they smell, they smell delightful. So yes, I'll be drinking those as well. That is all that's in the box. And what a box of treasures it is. I'm just looking down at it. And I'm so beside myself. I need to start making some more of these wonderful shawls. I have a vest that I want to make or um, some type of pullover with some texture in the honeycomb stitch with this one. And <clears throat> thinking up uh, a garment here where I can use panels, whether they're strips, squares, hexes, 
with this yarn here because I think I love the variety of color and contrast and rather than doing a stripey style kind of uh, garment or accessory I want to uh, play upon some stitch work where it will be in shapes uh, with this yarn here. I absolutely love all of this yarn. This is a wonderful yarn that I'm yet to um, think up of what uh, garment I want to make. And these beautiful earthy tones as well. Ah, there is so much more that I cannot hold right now in this camera to so show just the beauties and treasures in, in this box of yarn. Thank you, thank you so much, Edith. You have definitely spoiled me and I don't know what I did to deserve this, but I am going to be making some beautiful things and showing them here on the channel. So thank you for allowing me to touch yarns that I would never have tried before in my lifetime or career in using uh, yarns. Uh, so I really do appreciate that. And with that, I will catch you up in the next video. I am going to put this yarn away right now and enjoy looking for patterns. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.